We thank Allah for giving us another day in our life, which is infinitely valuable. Every moment in this life is infinitely valuable when it is used to earn the pleasure of the Almighty that will benefit, benefit us in the eternal life. So he has given us another day, inshallah, that we make full use of every day that we get and every moment that we get. And we send countless blessings on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Virtues of zikr, continuation, uh, and this one is based on an article the lofty status of remembrance of zikr of Allah, which draws from Quran and uh, traditions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and sayings of some of the most illustrious scholars of Islam. <clears throat> uh, bulk of it is uh, on, on what is zikr, and how much zikr should we be engaged in? But before that, let me give you a quick rundown on what we discussed in the last halakha. The highlights, basically, after introduction, I talked about the etiquettes of zikr from Quran and how much time we should devote, but we will spend uh, some more time on that aspect based on the article that I showed. I will spend some more time. And then if we are not engaged in zikr, then shaitan is assigned. It's from the Holy Quran. And the difference between a person who is engaged in the remembrance of Allah and a person who does not remember Allah is like the living and the dead. And then virtues of zikr. Zikr is, uh, is the greatest form of worship as per one verse of the Quran, leads to success from the Quran, uh, brings forgiveness and reward from the Quran, protects from being losers from the Quran, saves from regret from ahadith, protection against shaitan from the Quran, best protection from punishment uh, from ahadith, Allah remembers the person who remembers Allah from the Quran, angels surround gathering of remembrance from uh, ahadith, best of deeds uh, from ahadith, Allah Allah boasts to the person who's engaged in the zikr of Allah from Ahadith, a source of nur uh, from Quran. And today we will talk about uh, the 13th point from last week, which I could not complete. So I'll complete that one and then move on to, move on to uh, greetings of angels. This is uh, from the Ahadith, zikr is the goal hearts find tranquility in the remembrance of Allah, best in rank, meaning of zikr, bulk or, or significant portion of uh, today's presentation will be based on uh, what constitutes zikr and how much time we should devote to zikr and what is the purpose of zikr and then conclusion. <clears throat> so um, from, the, from the last week, this is the section I could not complete loving Allah and being loved by him. And the green part, I, in the morning I decided a few hours ago that uh, I won't be able to finish. So I, will, I will bypass certain parts. So I put them in green rather than deleting these, those completely. <coughs> loving Allah and being loved by him. On that, Ibn Juzai from the 13th century, uh, uh, he says, he writes, he's a, he's a famous scholar, in regards to zikr, people are in one of two levels. The first level is the general Muslims who make zikr for reward. How much virtue will I get? And the second is the, he called, the, the translation is made here is elite, but let's say the uh, devotees of Allah. 
who want to draw near to Allah. They are not concerned about how many virtues I will get. They want to draw near to Allah and to be in his uh, presence to establish relationship with Allah. And, and that makes a tremendous uh, difference between the two groups. One group engaging in zikr for earning reward and the other group engaging in zikr for uh, establishing relationship with Allah. There's a huge difference between the two groups. Other group is fine, but uh, you can see the difference also. And uh, from the last week, I wanted to draw certain, certain portions for our recollection, but uh, time will not permit me. So uh, today's presentation, uh, greetings of angels. And this is a tradition from Rasulullah If your hearts were always in the state that they are in during dhikr, the angels would come to see you to the point that they would greet you in the middle of the road. Aisha radiallahu anha said, oh, I, I wanted to bypass that. That's why it's in green. So let's bypass that. Allah Ta'ala made prayer the means and remembrance the goal. In other words, what I'm trying to convey is Allah has given us certain, um, what do you call those, um, rituals like prayer, like fasting, like hajj, like zakat, like uh, helping people. So these are the means of reaching Allah. And the goal is reaching Allah. The one is means. For example, prayer is the means. And remembrance of Allah that means establishing relationship with him is the ultimate goal. Allah Ta'ala says, Lo, worship guards one from lewdness and inequity, from uh, sin and shamelessness. But verily, remembrance of Allah is greater, more important. And so, uh, in other words, Allah Ta'ala says, he is successful who purifies himself and remembers the name of his Lord and so prays. He is successful who purifies himself through remembrance of Allah. So establish prayer for my remembrance. Prayer is to be established as a means of remembering Allah, which becomes the goal. And I would add to it, this is Surah Taha, I would add to it that uh, the goal of remembering Allah is to establish relationship with him. <clears throat> Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani uh, from the 13th, 14th century, he has 150 works to his credit in his Fat al-Bari, which actually is commentary on Bukhari, relates Qadi Abu Bakr Ibn al-Arabi's, and Ibn al-Arabi has 700 works attributed to him, actually 850, but 700 have been authenticated to be his work. So uh, he relates Qadi Abu Bakr Ibn al-Arabi, Arabi's explanation that there is no good deed except with zikr as a precondition for its validity, for its acceptance. Whoever does not remember Allah in his heart at the time of his sadaqa or fasting, for example, then his deed is incomplete. Therefore, zikr is the best of deeds because of this. Ibn Arabi is a very famous person in Islamic uh, scholarly history. So uh, when we are engaging in some act of worship like sadaqah, fasting, or hajj, prayer, uh, then uh, without remembrance of Allah, that means without attachment to Allah, to the deed, it is incomplete. It's not that it's invalid, it is incomplete. 
and, and therefore zikr is the best of deeds because of this. Allah Ta'ala's remembrance should underlie everything we do. The hearts find tranquility in the remembrance of Allah. The people who call on Allah without distraction, without distraction, have been mentioned in Quran as well as the effect of that calling has on their heart. That is also mentioned in the Quran. In houses which Allah has allowed to be raised to honor and for his name to be remembered in them in the morning and in the evening, he is glorified there day and night by men whom neither trade nor sale can divert from the remembrance of Allah. People who dread the day on which all hearts will be overturned and eyes will be petrified. Two verses from Surah Nur. Allah is mentioning about the houses where Allah is mentioned uh, day and night. And he's talking about people who, whose uh, trade and commerce cannot divert them from the remembrance of Allah. <clears throat> there are people who say, I don't have time to, to even die. Uh, I cannot pray. I, I do not even have time to even die. Allah Ta'ala is saying that there are people whom, uh, whom neither trade nor sale can divert from the remembrance of Allah. And they are the people whose hearts are afraid of the of the hereafter, the day of judgment. And uh, I simply wanted to mention, because of shortage of time, I can't go into the depth of any one of them. Uh, Abu Huraira's house, Hazrat Abu Huraira's house, uh, especially at night, during the day, you know, they were all remembering Allah Ta'ala. But at night, uh, he, 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 uh, he would uh, pray one third of the night his wife would pray one third of the night. His daughter would pray one third of the night. So that everybody was praying throughout the night. And so what is the effect of remembering Allah? Those who believe and their hearts find satisfaction in the remembrance of Allah. For without doubt in the remembrance of Allah do hearts find satisfaction. Allah bi tatma'innul kulub. For without doubt in the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find satisfaction, tranquility, peace, comfort, in whatever way you translate the Arabic word. That ma'innul kulub. Kulub is heart. That ma'innul kulub. Satisfaction or tranquility. And that is the ultimate goal of every human being, I guess. But they think that they get that satisfaction through uh, money and wealth or uh, power and position and possession. And so they run after these. Uh, assuming that you get satisfaction from worldly possession. But Allah Ta'ala did not keep peace and satisfaction and tranquility in worldly possession. Peace and tranquility and satisfaction is in association with Allah Ta'ala, in relationship with Allah Ta'ala that we establish through his remembrance in the way shown by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We move on to the best sec uh, next section, best in rank. Abu Said, radiallahu anhu, narrates, Rasulullah sallallahu was asked, which of the servants of Allah is best in rank before Allah on the day of resurrection? He said, the ones who remember him much. I said, O messenger of Allah, what about the fighter in the way of Allah? He, sallallahu alayhi wa answered, even if he strikes the unbelievers and mushrikeen with his sword, until it broke and becomes red with their blood. Truly, those who do zikr are better than him in rank. There's an explanation of this later on. We will come to that. We saw a similar hadith last week. Meaning of zikr. The word zikr has many meanings. 
It means Allah's book and its recitation, prayer, learning and teaching. The author of Fiqh al-Sunnah, Sayyid ibn Jubair, one of the leading tabi said, anyone engaged in obeying Allah is in fact engaged in the remembrance of Allah. You're obeying Allah. You're engaged in the remembrance of Allah. Atta ibn, ibn Abi Rab, uh, Rabah, he was a mufti of Makkah, said, the gatherings of zikr are the gatherings where the lawful and the prohibited things are discussed. For instance, selling, buying, prayers, fasting, marriage, divorce, and pilgrimage. In other words, the ahkam of Islam is discussed. Abu Abdullah al-Qurtubi of the 13th century said, gatherings of zikr are the gatherings for knowledge and admonition, those in which the word of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger, accounts of our righteous predecessors are discussed. He uh, is famous for his tafsir. What I, and here I mean I, myself, what I quoted primarily on zikr from Quran and hadith relate to remembrance of Allah in the heart or in both the heart and the tongue, as implied in the verse, the men and women who remember Allah abundantly. But uh, as I said, zikr can be anything which involves worship of Allah or uh, admonition of Allah or ahkam, discussion of ahkam of, of Allah. Any good deed to please Allah is zikr. But uh, in, in, yes, in the previous halqa and today's halqa, we are talking zikr in terms of remembering Allah in the heart or both in the heart and the tongue. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam both praised and explained what is in the verse and the previous verse when he said, as related in Muslim, the single-hearted are foremost. And the Sahaba asked, O Messenger of Allah, who are the single-hearted? He replied, the men and women who remember Allah abundantly. Zikr may sometimes mean both inner remembrance and outward mention, as in the verse, remember me and I shall remember you. When it is read in light of the Hadith Qudsi, those that remember me in their heart, I remember them in my heart. And those that remember me in a gathering that is, that make mention of me, I remember them, make mention of them in a gathering better than theirs. So those who remember me, I remember them. So that is in the heart, our heart, Allah's heart. And those who talk about Allah, Allah talks about them. So that is uh, outward remembrance. Broadly speaking, there are three types of zikr, of the heart, of the tongue, and the two together. Ibn Hajar in Fatal Bari, uh, which is commentary on Bukhari, explained that what is meant by zikr in Abu al-Darda's narration of the primacy of zikr over jihad is the complete zikr and consciousness of Allah's greatness, whereby one becomes better, for example, than those who battle the disbelievers without such recollection. So if you have two, two mujahid, one is not so, so much aware about Allah, and another who is also fighting, but also is conscious of Allah's greatness, obviously the second person is better than the first person. So that is how Ibn Hajar describes that, that uh, ahadith on, uh, on uh, the Zakirin being better than a Mujahid. What is meant by zikr here is the utterance of the expressions which we have been encouraged to say and say abundantly, such as the enduring good deeds that we say after salah after prayer, and they are subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allah Akbar, and all that is related to them, such as the haukala, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah, or the basmallah, basmallah al-Rahman al al-Rahim, or bismillah rahman rahim or hasballah, hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil, or astaghfar, and the like. 
as well as invocations for the good of this world and the next world. Duas, duas are, are a form of zikr. Now, to me, you know, this slide and the next slide have been the, the most enlightening from this article. Zikr can take place with the tongue for which the one who utters it receives the reward. I'll request you to listen very carefully these two slides. So we can make zikr with the tongue and we don't understand exactly what we are saying, but we will get reward. It is not necessary for this that, the, that he understand or recall its meaning on condition that he not mean other than its meaning by its utterance. We don't understand exactly what we are saying, but in our heart, there is, there is no other meaning assigned to what we are saying, to what we are saying. We'll get reward. We don't exactly understand what we are saying. If in addition to its utterance, there is zikr in the heart, that means remembrance uh, in the heart, our heart is attuned to Allah Ta'ala, then it is more complete zikr. Reward is more. And if added to that, there is the recollection of the meaning of the zikr and what it entails, such as magnifying Allah and exalting him above defect or need, it is even more complete. When we have the greatness of our heart, when we are saying what we are saying, and the more we have the greatness of the, of the heart, the more complete is our zikr. And this also involves, you know, comprehending what we are saying. And if all this takes place inside a good deed, we, we have all of this. It means utterance of the attributes of Allah or some tasbihat, and then uh, consciousness about Allah, and then understanding of what we are saying and uh, comprehension uh, about the greatness of Allah, the might and majesty of Allah. And at the same time, we are involved in some good deed at the same time, like uh, prayer or jihad or sadaqa. It is even more complete. That zikr is even more complete. And if one perfects one's turning to Allah, completely turns towards Allah, that means turns away from sin towards Allah, which is a form of hijrah. That is the best form of hijrah, moving away from sin and towards Allah, and purifies one's sincerity towards Him, ikhlas and niyyah, purity of intention is also there, then that is the farthest perfection. The one is simply uttering the word, the other is uh, uttering the word, uh, but uh, uh, Allah, Allah, we are, our heart is attuned towards Allah, and the third is we have comprehension about Allah, the might and majesty of Allah. And then the fourth is we are doing some good deed. While, uh, we, are, uh, we are remembering Allah while doing some good deed. And the fifth is when we completely turn away from sin and we are moving towards Allah, gaining nearness to Allah with every act of good deed. And uh, we have sincerity of intention, and that is the farthest perfection. Fakhr al-Din al-Razi, who is known as Sultan of the Theo Theologians, and I was imp I was so impressed with the the, the uh, what do you call that biography of this person, and he there's hardly anything in those days that he did not have contribution about, that he did not write about. At least 11 disciplines are mentioned. And some of them being uh, theology, physics, chemistry, uh, medicine, uh, astronomy, things like that. So he said, what is meant by the zikr of the tongue is the expressions that stand for tasbih, tahmid, and tamjid, exaltation, praise, and glorification the Sultan of Theologians. As for the zikr of the heart, so zikr of the tongue and the zikr of the heart, 
It consists in reflection on the texts, the, the words that we utter, that point to Allah's essence and his attributes, that is understanding the inner meaning of the words. The do's and don'ts and the rulings that pertain to them and on the secrets of Allah's creation. By looking at the creation of Allah and wondering about it. So one is the, the texts uh, and that comes from the Quran and Ahadith and the other is the creation of Allah. Both can give us comprehension about the might and majesty of the Almighty. As for zikr of the limbs, it consists in their being immersed in obedience. And that is why Allah named prayer zikr. And he said, when the call is proclaimed in Juma, hasten earnestly to the zikr of Allah. He's saying hasten earnestly to the uh, to prayer, to Juma prayer. Allah is using the term zikr of Allah. That means Allah Ta'ala is not keeping it only as a ritual. He's tying it up to his remembrance and uh, obedience, obedience, submission, everything that comes with his remembrance so that we can establish relationship with Allah Ta'ala. It is reported by devotees that zikr has seven aspects. Zikr of the eyes, which consists, among other things, in weeping. Zikr of the ears, which consists, in other things, to uh, uh, listening about the greatness of Allah. And, and keeping away, keeping the ears away from listening to other things that we are not supposed to listen to, or uh, the, keeping the eyes away from, from uh, not seeing what we are not supposed to see, or keeping the tongue away from not uh, uh, speaking what we, uh, what we should not speak, uh, um, keeping the tongue away from speaking, speaking what we should not speak. The zikr of the tongue, here it says, which consists in praising Allah Ta'ala. Zikr of the hands, which consists of giving or helping somebody and not doing things that we should not do with the hands. Zikr of the body, which consists in loyalty, wafa, uh, and not doing what we should not be doing. Zikr of the heart, which consists of fear and hope, khauf and raja, and raja. Fear and hope, our heart should be in between fear and hope. Fear that we, uh, that we may not be forgiven and hope that we will be forgiven, inshallah. Zikr of the spirit, which consists of utter submission and acceptance, utter submission to Allah Ta'ala and accepting him as the Rabb, the Lord. And how much Zikr? Ahmed reports, Imam Ahmed, that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whatever you say in celebration of Allah's glory, majesty, and oneness, and by all your words of praise for him, gather around the throne of Allah. These words resound like the buzzing of bees and call attention to the person who uttered them to Allah. Don't you wish to have someone there in the presence of Allah who would call attention to you? Whatever you say in celebration of Allah's glory, majesty and oneness, and all your words of praise for him gather around the throne of Allah. These words resound like the buzzing of bees and call attention to the person who uttered them to Allah. Our, our acts and our, our words, they are around the throne of Allah and buzzing like bees and call attention to the person. Attention of Allah to the person who uttered them to Allah. Don't you wish to have someone there in the presence of Allah who would call attention to you? And the answer is obviously yes. And for how long do we want that something like this should happen for us? We want it 24 hours if possible. And how can we gain that status and position and exaltedness? If we are always engaged in the zikr of Allah, simple as that. What about the time when we are sleeping? If we sleep in the way of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we are engaged in zikr. What about the time we are in the toilet? If we use the toilet in the way of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we are engaged in zikr. 
So for a Muslim, you know, there is no time in which he will not be engaged in zikr as long as he follows the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in whatever he does. And then there'll be somebody, uh, there'll be, there'll be a, a buzzing of bees around the throne, uh, drawing the attention of Allah to the, to, uh, towards, towards us. And so the required amount of zikr is as much as possible. We make zikr as much as we can. Allah ordered that he should be remembered abundantly, describing the wise men and women who ponder his signs, the Quran mentions, those who remember Allah standing, sitting, and on their sides. In straightforward terms, remember Allah at all times. Uh, let me read it because I think I have, I have time. I was rushing, so that gives me some, some more time. Those men and women who engage much in Allah's praise, for them has Allah prepared forgiveness and a great reward. Something we read last, uh, last week needs a reminder. In straightforward terms, remember Allah at all times. Ibn Salah from the 12th and 13th century said that much is when one is constant in supplicating or continuous in supplicating. Concerning the above Quranic verses, Ali ibn Abu Talha relates that Ibn Abbas who said, the uh, first cousin of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all obligations imposed upon man by Allah are clearly marked and one is exempted from them only in the presence of a genuine case. Five prayers, marked. Month of fasting, marked. Hajj, I cannot do now. I have to do at the time of Hajj. Zakat, that is marked. <clears throat> one thing that is not marked is the zikr of Allah. Only exception is the obligation of zikr. Allah has set no specific limits for it. And under no circumstances is one allowed to be negligent of it. All of it said by Ibn Abbas. Continuation on how much zikr. We are commanded to remember Allah. Standing, sitting, and reclining on your sides in the morning, during the day, at sea or on land, on journeys or at home, in poverty and in prosperity, in sickness or in health, openly and secretly, and in fact, at all times throughout one's life and in all circumstances. There is no such thing as too much zikr. He who loves something mentions it much. To the extent we love Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to that extent we will remember and mention them. To the extent we love Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to that extent we will remember and mention them. If there is love of Allah and to the extent there is love of Allah, to that extent we will remember them and mention them. Imam Ghazali said in the 40th book of his Ihya, if there was Basically, what he says here is that uh, when a person is engaged in dunya, you know, he's acquiring a degree, acquiring a, uh, position, acquiring wealth, acquiring power, acquiring uh, fame. So he's spending all his time in these acquisitions. And if we make effort on something, then our heart gets tied to that something. A gardener growing, uh, uh, nurturing a garden, loves the garden. He cannot accept, he cannot tolerate any harm to the garden because he loves the garden. Similarly, you know, when we make effort to acquire worldly possessions, we grow fondness, love for those worldly possessions. And then we don't want to leave the world. We have difficulty in leaving the world. Our heart gets attached to the world. So when the time of death comes, the person laments, oh, I'm leaving my beautiful house, my beautiful car, my beautiful wife, my beautiful children, and so on and so forth. 
But on the other hand, a person is, he, he uses dunya, but he doesn't grow attachment, fondness for dunya. No hubbud dunya, love of dunya. He uses dunya. And he has attachment to wife and children. All, all that is there. But he has been acquiring not worldly possessions. He has been uh, constantly in the remembrance of Allah and the obedience of Allah in establishing relationship with Allah. When that person dies, he will actually look forward towards death. And there, have, there are many stories about, about the devotees of Allah who at the time of death said, I love to meet my Lord. I've been waiting for that time. When Malakul Maut came, they said, I've been waiting for this time. All these, all these years. So this is what is expressed by Imam Ghazali. Because after death, now let me read this part. For the barriers which lay between him and his beloved, meaning Allah, will now be removed after death. And he will be free of the obstacles and cares of the world, all of which had distracted him from the remembrance of Allah when he was alive. So he'll be happy when he dies and he meets his Lord. After we die, you know, before our, our, our soul uh, is attached to our body for questioning by the angels, we are presented before Allah. We have to stand before Allah. He looks forward to that moment. This is one of the aspects of the difference between the states of life and death. For a person who is engaged in dunya and the person who uses dunya but is engaged in Allah and in his remembrance and in his obedience and in establishing relationship with him. And what is the purpose of zikr? Purpose of zikr is to purify hearts and souls. To make it ready to meet the Lord after establishing relationship with him in this world and awaken the human consciousness, conscience. The Quran says, and establish regular prayer for prayer restraints from shameful and unjust deeds and remembrance of Allah is the greatest thing in life without doubt. The remembrance of Allah has a greater impact in restraining one from shameful and unjust deeds than just the formal regular prayer. Now here it is said, in Surah Al-Ankabut, verse number 45, that prayer restrains from shameful and unjust deeds. In Tanha Salat Anil Fashai Wal Munkar. In Salat Tanha Anil Fashai Wal Munkar. Verily, prayer restrains from shameful and unjust deeds. From sin and shameful, uh, from sin and shameful deeds. And the point here is the remembrance of Allah when attached to prayer, the consciousness of Allah when attached to prayer has a greater impact in restraining one from shameful and unjust deeds than just the formal regular prayer. This is so because when a servant opens up his soul to his Lord, extolling his praise, Allah strengthens him with his light, increasing thereby his iman, and conviction and re reassuring his mind and heart. This refers to, I, I'll, I'll bypass that. <sighs> Conclusion, Allah Ta'ala commands us to remember him standing, sitting and on our sides. We heard that verse last week and also this week. Is it obligated, obligatory to remember him all the time? Well, he tell, tells us to remember him all the time. Remember, even when someone gets into Jannah, if we don't do this, what will happen? If we don't remember him all the time, then we should remember the, the tradition of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which says that when someone gets into Jannah, he will regret for those times he spent in this dunya without the remembrance of Allah. He will regret for those times. I wish I had remembered Allah all the time. I wish I had remembered Allah even more so that I could get from Allah Ta'ala even more because that will last forever and forever, whatever we get in Jannah. If I get less than X, Y, Z, I will lament that. I will regret that. And that regret will last forever. The moments that we pass without the remembrance of Allah. Sulaiman alayhi salam, you know, you just to remind you, and you know it, 
that uh, he was going on his flying carpet and, uh, with, with uh, the jinn, uh, with his courtiers and the jinn and the birds uh, giving shade. And it was a wonderful sight as he flew in his flying carpet. And uh, an old man from, from the art, I mean, standing on the art, he saw this and he was amazed and he said, Subhanallah. Sulaiman alayhi salam heard, heard that Allah Ta'ala caused that Subhanallah to reach Sulaiman alayhi salam. He came down and he said, Your Subhanallah is more valuable than the kingdom of Sulaiman because the kingdom of Sulaiman will not be there one day. There's no trace of the kingdom of Sulaiman alayhi salam today. Uh, and Sulaiman alayhi salam said, There'll be no kingdom, the kingdom of Sulaiman al-Islam will not be there one day, but what you said, your subhanallah, the, the, the effect of that, the reward of that, you will get forever and forever in the year after. So that is the words of Allah, what came from Allah compared to the achievements of this dunya. Purpose of life is to achieve a state of mind in which we remember Allah in whatever we do so that we fall within his purpose of creating us. And what is the purpose of his creating us? And I did not create the jinn and mankind except to worship me. So uh, what I'm saying here in conclusion is the purpose of life is to achieve a state of mind in which we remember Allah all the time so that we are in the uh, uh, we, we fall into this purpose of creation of allah his purpose of creating us which is that we worship him so when we remember him all the time we uh, we worship him including doing the obligatory acts or the other uh, pre prescribed uh, acts we remember him within prescribed forms of worship and outside prescribed forms of worship with consciousness about Allah's might and majesty, not in a ritualistic manner, an understanding of the meaning of what we utter, comprehension of, of what we are saying. And that comes from ilm, acquiring knowledge. We worship him only for his sake. And that comes from purity of intention. We worship him as per his commandments. And that relates to being devoutly obedient. I'm using a translation of a term in the Quran as to how we should worship him in a devoutly obedient manner. We worship him as exemplified by Rasulullah and that implies following his sunnah in everything we do. And we worship him strengthened by firm faith in all, in, in la ilaha illallah. What that basically means is all is from Allah. That is the inner meaning of La ilaha illallah. La ilaha, you negate everything. Illallah. Allah Nothing can do anything. It is Allah who does everything. All power is, is from Allah. So we worship him strengthened by firm faith in the kalima and we make every act better than the previous ones in terms of the above attributes of worship. Every salat should be better than the previous salat. Every tasbihat should be better than the previous tasbihat. Every form of worship should be better than the previous form so that we are on, on, on a continuous trage trajectory of improvement. Otherwise, we'll be washed away by the forces of shaitan and, the, and our nafs and the whisperings of evil people and the attraction of dunya. We'll be washed away unless we exert, exert ourselves in improving every act of worship that we do. Every time should be better than the previous one so that our Iman increases, we gain more nearness to Allah Ta'ala, we get more peace. The more nearness we get to Allah Ta'ala, we get more peace. And, and that is a benefit. And when we get benefit, 
we make more exertion in the next act of worship that we do. And we recognize that every act should be our last act, uh, could be our last act. And oftentimes we hear the Imam saying, pray as if you are praying the last time. So every act should be done in a manner as if it is our last act. And one act will be the last one. One prayer will be the last one. One tasbihat will be the last one. One tilawat will be the last one. One uh, uh, hajj will be the la uh, last one. One, uh, what do you call that? Uh, Psalm, fasting will be the last one. So every, every, if we do every one as if it is the last one, we will possibly do it better than without that thought. Abu Huraira, that's on the next page. Abu Huraira, and we seek to continue to acquire knowledge and ourselves practice and convey to others by virtue of being the best of nations. Khaira Ummat. We should have mercy on others, those who don't realize. We should have reach out to others, not just through, uh, through uh, electronic means. You send to a hundred people, thousand people, and then you say, oh, I have given, I made dawah. No, there's no dawah better than heart to heart, face to face, or, or mouth to ear. There's no dawah better than that. And that takes time. And we are not, uh, we are not uh, ready to give that time. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa invited person to person, house to house, heart to heart, Time and again, time and again. There's no shortcut in Dawat. We use these media since they're available, these electronic media, but uh, no, you, to get a real result, we should, uh, we should uh, try to reach out heart to heart, person to person. It takes time, it takes time. And uh, time and again, reaching out, having mercy for the others, our friends, our relatives, our acquaintances, we have to reach out to them. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and why should we reach out? We are the best of nations. Allah Ta'ala said, you will call people towards the good and you will try to stop them from evil doing. So we have to do it. And in so many other traditions, it is mentioned in at least 60 plus verses, it is mentioned. And then, you know, I want to close with this saying of, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reported by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that when the human being dies, his deeds and uh, his, de his deeds end when we die or deeds end book of record ends except for three things ongoing charity if we have made some and that benefits people for the sake of Allah that comes to our book of deeds beneficial knowledge we learn and we convey to others and they practice and they invite others that will keep on coming to our book of deeds when we are in the grave or a righteous child who prays for us. They act because we taught them, we train them, we convey to them, and they practice, they convey to others. So these are the three things that in one tradition, Rasulullah said, will help us even after we die. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq. So we talked about uh, loving Allah and being loved. I bypassed from last week, greetings of angels. Angels will greet us. Uh, the person who is engaged in the zikr of Allah, zikr is the goal. Uh, and, and the, the, uh, the uh, acts of worship, prescribed acts of worship are the means to reach the goal. And actually to me, the ultimate goal is the relationship with Allah Ta'ala, the nearness to Allah Ta'ala, kurb, from which comes kurbani. Hearts find tranquility in the remembrance of Allah. Uh, the best in rank are those who are, who are making uh, zikr and doing something and understanding what he's, what he's doing and comprehending the might and majesty of the Almighty and with the sincerity and devotion and submission, total submission. Meaning of zikr, uh, how much zikr, we talked about those and purpose of zikr is to establish relationship with Allah Ta'ala nearness to, to Allah Ta'ala and to remember him all the time so that we fall in, in that verse in which Allah Ta'ala says that I have created men and jinn and men only for my worship. May Allah Ta'ala give us understanding. Thank you, Hamid Bhai and brothers uh, for giving me this opportunity uh, to speak a few words on Surah 
Lahab or Surah Masad, whatever you call, uh, these are the two names that Surah has. Aaudhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Tabbat yada abhi lahab wa tabba. Ma agna anuhu maluhu wa ma qasab. Sayasla naranjata lahab wa amratu. Amma latal hatwab. Fiji diha hablum mim masad. Today I like to speak on uh, first two ayah of Surah Lahab and I will go uh, to the explanation of each word. Uh, it's the grammar part uh, plus uh, the uh, meaning of that word and then uh, a very short tafsir uh, of that particular ayah. So I start with the first uh, ayah that is Tabbat Yada Abhi Lahab. Lahab wa Tabba. So this is the ayah. The first word is tabba. Uh, the Arabic, uh, uh, if you uh, just, uh, uh, if you are interested to know that Arabic uh, uh, language is a uh, particular language where every word has its uh, feminine and masculine uh, gender, and especially the nouns, and even. Uh, the verbs also have uh, the feminine and masculine uh, when the verbs are used. Uh, so, and uh, every uh, noun has got three uh, numbers, uh, the singular number, dual number, and the plural number. So, uh, in Arabic, it is uh, unlike English and Bengali, that it has two numbers. In actually Arabic, there are three numbers, singular, dual, and uh, plural. So, tabbat is the word, uh, this is a feminine gender uh, and uh, uh, is a verb. And it's a, uh, and in Arabic, there are actually two tenses, not three like Bengali and English. Uh, two tenses are uh, the past tense and the second one uh, is the present and future tense. So, present tense and future tense are together in Arabic. Uh, some extra words are used for uh, for, 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 for uh, saying about the future, uh, but the, the uh, tense is same for future and past. So if you go to this word tabbat, uh, tabbat is the word that is uh, in the past tense, and it is uh, the word uh, that is the uh, uh, gender, but it is a feminine gender. Uh, why it is feminine gender? Because this word is uh, qualifying, this verb is qualifying the next uh, word, yada. Uh, yada, uh, tabbat means perished. That means it has been destroyed. In most of the uh, literatures, you will find that may be destroyed or let it be destroyed. No, actually, Allah has not told us to give this lanat to anyone or to lahab or anyone. Uh, he, he, he has not told us to do that. Actually, he has clearly told Tabbat means it is already perished or it is already uh, the things have got destroyed. So Tabbat, the word meaning, particular word meaning is it has got destroyed or it has been perished. The second word is Yada. Yada is a uh, word uh, which is uh, your uh, number wise, it is, it is dual number. The uh, yada is yadun is uh, hand and yada are two hands. So tabbat yada means perished two hands. Yada. Abi lahab. Now here abi uh, has got three meanings. Uh, abi is uh, the owner and abi is sometimes called. Uh, sorry, not three meanings, two meanings. Ab Abi is father one, in one meaning, and Abi is also the other meaning is, uh, is the owner. So here, uh, the meaning of Abi is more in uh, towards the owner than the father. And Lahab, the word Lahab means uh, is a uh, plane, uh, plane. So Tabbat uh, Yada Abi Lahab means Perished are the hands of 
owner of the flame. Now, why it is owner of the flame? I'll come in the tafsir. Why it has been uh, uh, told owner of the flame? I'll come in the tafsir. But word meaning is that perished are the hands of the owner of the flame or father of the flame. So, uh, in Bengali, if we say uh, the lahab is lelihan shikha. Uh, so, it's not only flame, it's a, it's a burning flame. And Lili, in Bengali, if we say it is Lili Hanshika, so that is the that is the uh, word that that it, it means. And Tabba, the last word Tabba tiada abhi lahabyo wa Tabba. Wa Tabba is he also got destroyed. He also got destroyed. The single word is a full sentence. Wa is end. Tabba, uh, the single word makes a full sentence in Arabic. In, there are many uh, single words in Arabic which make a full sentence. So Tabba is the word uh, which means he is perished. So the if you say uh, that what is the meaning of the total word, uh, total sentence, the literal meaning of the total sentence is perished are the hands of the owner of flame and he himself is also perished. So this is the literal meaning of the sentence Tabbat Yada Abi Lahabeo Wa Tabba. I repeat the literal meaning of the sentence or the ayah is not sentence, it's the ayah. Uh, Tabbat Yada Abi Lahabeo Wa Tabba is perished are the hands or two hands of the owner of the flame or father of the flame and he himself is also perished. So this is the uh, your first uh, ayah that uh, is your uh, that, that the uh, uh, literal meaning. Now what has been meant here by the uh, if, I, if I go into the tafsir now of this uh, particular ayah what has been meant by that perished are the Hands. Abi Lahab was a man uh, who was the uncle of Hazrat Muhammad peace be upon him. He was one of the most wealthy person of your uh, deed and Mecca. He was also a very fair looking, fair looking man. And from that, actually, that Abi Lahab has come. He was from the uh, from the from the tribe uh, identity. He was from the Quraysh tribe. So, and when this surah was uh, surah was descended, after that, he was with his two hands fully well. He lived for ten more years. So, why it is being told that perished are the hands of Abi Lahab or the father of uh, the flame or uh, the uh, owner of the flame. By this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that whatever has been earned by the two hands by Abu Lahab is perished. It is not that his hands have been perished. It is said that he, whatever he has earned, that earning Whatever he has earned, that may be name, fame, that may be wealth, that may be uh, son, daughter, whatever he has earned, that total earning has gone in vain. So that is the word mean, uh, that, that, is, that is the meaning of the word that Tabbat Yada Abi Lahab. That means the uh, perished are the hands of Abi Lahab. It is not the physical hands of Abu, Abu Lahab, but it, it is the uh, earning because the hands are the tools for earning in a, in our life and hands are used for not only for earning the hands are uh, used for uh, even uh, when you earn something you work with the hands when you move you move your hands if you keep your hands steady and you move then your speed will be less so you use your, use your hands for even movement you use your hands for uh, uh, for for anything is the is the main tool that uh, people use for uh, earning and for doing something. So that's why it has been told that uh, the two hands of Abi Lahab is 
uh, destroyed uh, and uh, that means the earning uh, through those hands whatever has been earned throughout his life is uh, destroyed now why uh, here uh, the uh, his original name original name of abdul uh, abu lahab is abdul ojja uh, this is not uh, not his original name it, it has been this name has been used by allah for a particular reason his original name was abdul wajja abdul wajja is the wajja was one of the uh, one of the idols of that time and he himself called him and the abdul wajja means was the slave of wajja uh, that particular uh, idol so abdul wajja is his original name but here in this uh, uh, surah uh, and in this ayat especially allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala has called him as uh, abu abu lahab uh, and in the surah, because of the grammatical uh, your rule, it has become Abi Lahab, but otherwise the, uh, the, the, the name is Abu Lahab. So uh, Abu Lahab, why it has been told Abu Lahab? Uh, maybe uh, Allah has given here two meanings. One, uh, he, is, uh, he has been told as the father of Lahab means uh, his uh, son's name was Lahab. Uh, that we we do not know uh, whether his son's name was Lahab or not, uh, but uh, probably from the uh, if you if you tell it in Bengali uh, Rupok, uh, it, 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 so from that point of view, uh, the Lahab has been used for his fairness, uh, for his uh, your uh, very good build, uh, for his uh, for his stature and for his uh, very uh, good looking face. Uh, that has been told that he looks like a flame. His color was like a burning uh, flame. So that's why uh, this name has been used here by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Abi Lahab. Amit Bhai. It is mentioned that his cheeks were like a burning flame, reddish, flame. reddish, reddish. Reddish. Yeah. Uh, so, so that is the uh, uh, reason. Uh, so. So if we just uh, take the uh, your uh, the, the, the aim of uh, of this surah, what is what is, what is the aim behind this surah? Why Allah has uh, sent this surah to us, uh, and especially this ayat? So in the tafsir, it is said that this this surah and this ayat has been sent to us just because to give us the message that your identity from your caste or creed, your wealth, your stature, your fairness, whatever you have, will all will go, go in vain if you make kufr with Allah. So if you are doing a kufr with Allah, then whatever you have, from wherever caste and creed you are, he was from uh, the Christ, uh, your uh, Christ uh, caste, uh, the, 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 the most famous caste in the, uh, your tribe in the uh, uh, Diden uh, Arab. Uh, he was a, a very wealthy man, wealthy person. He was the uncle of the uh, most beloved man of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so he is actually a, a very renowned and very famous man with all the wealth and everything. But it has not come to any use just because he has done kufri with Allah. So the message that comes through this surah and particularly this ayah that everything will go in vain if you do kufri with Allah. So uh, I will finish the first ayat here and we'll go to the second ayat uh, because I'm taking probably a bit more time today, <laughs> the, the, which I do, normally uh, do not take, but uh, let, let, let me go to the second ayat. The second ayat is Ma agna anhumaluhu wa ma kasam. The beauty of this particular uh, ayah uh, in the formation of the sentence itself. Ma is a word, is a, is a harf 
in Arabic, which gives you three meanings. A single single harf gives three meanings. Number one is ma means what. Ma can again mean no. And ma also means that. In Bengali, if we say ma means ja, ma means no, na, and ma means ki. So ja, ki, na, these are the three meanings of the word, of, of the harf, ma itself. Here, this ma has been used with two connotations. Ma agna. If you take the, if you take the uh, uh, meaning uh, what, then it says ma agna. What use it has come? In what use it has come? Ki upokar kollo. Anhu. The word anhu means take. Maluhu. His wealth. Wama kasab. And whatever means ja, whatever. Here ma has been used with the meaning ja means whatever he has earned. Kasaba means whatever he has earned. So the literal meaning of the this ayah can be two. One that what in what use has come his wealth and whatever he has earned. On the other hand, if you take the meaning of this word, ma, na, or no, then it comes that the earnings and his wealth and whatever he has earned, he has earned, has not come into any use. So Allah makes two meanings of this sentence. In the first one, he asks, in what use his will and whatever he has earned that has come? So he is asking. And in the same ayah, he is answering. His wealth and whatever he has earned has not come to any use. It is a, it is a miracle that a single sentence asks the question, make you think that yes, what is this what is this answer? What is the answer? And at the same time, it gives you the answer that it is, uh, no, it has not come to any use. It, 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 it's a miraculous sentence, actually. So that is the literal uh, meaning that uh, what uh, your, 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 your uh, good it has done to him. And the same uh, sentence says that, no, uh, uh, his wealth and his whatever he has earned has not done any, anything good, good to him. Uh, here, if I go into uh, the uh, tafsir of this uh, particular ayah, then, uh, 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 then, then I have uh, probably mostly said that uh, in first case, the Allah is uh, asking uh, or telling who, those who are reading it, giving them uh, the question that in what use those have come. And in the second time, he is saying the no, uh, it has not come um, to any use uh, uh, and, and, and it will not come into any use provided you do kufri with Allah. So it says that uh, it, has, it will not come to any use. Not only it, it, it will not come to any use, it, it also means that it will not be able to stop. It will not be able to stop in the Akhira uh, stop uh, in his punishment, uh, his punishments. It, it will not be able to stop his punishments or whatever Allah decides on that day, his wealth and whatever he has earned during his life, uh, uh, throughout his life, will not come to any use and it will not be able to prevent the punishment that he is liable to get uh, for his deeds that he has done uh, throughout his life uh, here. So that is the uh, uh, the smallest tafsir probably that can be done. I sleep. Let me pray for uh, the SSC candidates, uh, not only of RCC, but uh, our relatives who might be 
sitting for the exam. We pray for uh, all from among our fraternity who are ill or are in difficulty and for all those who passed away. And uh, among, among our fraternity, the names that I know are Farooq Amin and Amir Hussain from my batch, Mrs. Maskura Ayub, uh, Lutfi Ayub from second batch, Captain Shamsu Zaman, Abul Barkat from sixth batch, Mrs. Mahfuz Reza, Mahfuz from sixth batch. And uh, I'm, I'm bypassing some of the names because I'm not sure how their status is now. Saif's father-in-law, uh, who is uh, undergoing cancer treatment. We pray for Jahangir from 24th batch, uh, whom uh, a lot of brothers came forward to help in his transplant. Uh, he applied for visa, but uh, judges informs that the embassy declined the visa the first time, so he has applied again. We pray for Amirul Faisal of 19th batch, and uh, Mustafi's Nobel of the same batch. Nobel is, uh, is uh, being treated for cancer. And we pray for Colonel Aftab's wife, Aftab from 14th batch. And uh, we pray that uh, Major Mahbub who has largely recovered his uh, non-medical difficulties uh, are made easy by Allah Ta'ala. Farooq, we need to specially pray for him. He's going to New Delhi on the 19th of this month, my recollection. Uh, he's, uh, he's still suffering from a uh, couple of different ailments. Abir's father, Mr. Muhammad Ali Reza, who's uh, undergoing dialysis. Dr. Firoz Hussain from fifth batch in New Zealand. Uh, if anybody can give any update about him, he underwent in four years, four uh, uh, surgeries for tumor in the head. May Allah Ta'ala completely cure Rashid from six batch and uh, protect uh, uh, Habib from ninth batch from any uh, outcome from his recent diagnostic test, any, any uh, any uh, unwanted outcome from his recent diagnostic test. And uh, my, my guess is that Razvi from 38th batch is, is, uh, is on, 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 on his two feet now, recovered. May Allah Ta'ala grant or was. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad jazallahu anna Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma huwa. Subhanallahi lazim wa bihamdihi wa la hawla wa la kuwata illa billahi la li lazim subhanallahi wa bihamdihi ya adada khalqi wa riza nafsi wa zina darshi wa riza nafsi. Allahumma ajirna minan nar, Allahumma ajirna minan nar, Subhanallahi lazim wa bihamdihi wa la hawla wa la kuwata illa wa la Anta Rabbi la ilaha illa anta alayka tawakaltu wa anta tabul arshi kareem mashallahu kana wa maalam ya shalam ya kum wa la hawla wa la kuwata illa billahi wa illa subhanahu wa ta'ala la kuti shayin kareem wa illa la kuti adil kuli shayin jil Allahumma inni auzubika min shari nafsi wa min shari kuli da'u qatil anta akhizum bin asihati hatna rabbi ala sirati mustaqim Allahumma اللهم اغفر لي ولوالدنا وجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين الرحمن ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا كل تعيون well, uh, whatever you have, you have granted us tawfiq to to say and to uh, to act in your obedience in your worship, Allah, you please accept the shortcomings of all our acts, Allah, and give us the understanding of of what we heard and and uh, rectify the shortcomings, the mistakes that I have made, Allah, 
you forgive me allah for that for my for my shortcomings allah and you accept all our deeds allah done individually or collectively allah and you accept and convey to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you convey to our near and dear ones who are in the grave allah wala from our relatives our parents our 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 grandfathers and all our relatives allah you convey to them and all our friends and all our teachers allah and all those who were associated with with our college allah wala and uh, you convey to all muslims allah you make their grave a garden a, a garden of jannah to firdaus and expand it allah and fill it with noor allah and you increase their status every day allah and you increase their status on the day of judgment and grant them shade on the day under the arsh on the day of judgment and make their make their hisab easy allah wala and you you enable them to cross the bridge with the with the wink of an eye allah and you you grant them jannah to firdaus allah without any reckoning allah O oh Allah, and you forgive, you forgive our past sins, and you forgive our future sins, Allah. You you accept our previous duas, and you accept our future duas, Allah. O oh Allah, you accept us first and foremost. You accept us, Allah. O oh Allah, grant us a little space under your mercy and under your forgiveness and under your protection and under your hidayat, Allah. O oh Allah, you accept us, Allah. you accept us every day every moment allah you protect us from shaitan from nafs from from the the evil whisperings of human beings and from the attraction of dunya oh allah you you protect us every moment allah you protect you you hold our our hands and and take us to grave when you are you are you are pleased with us allah and you take us with kalama in our lips allah and protect us from the the final the final uh, uh, whisperings of shaitan allah so that we also get when we, uh, we when we leave this world we also get your your best uh, care allah in the grave and on the day of judgment and in crossing the bridge and in entering jannah to firdaus without any reckoning allah so that we can live together forever and forever allah you give us such a life allah Uh, which is devoted to fulfilling obligation towards you and to fulfilling obligation towards fellow human beings and give us the ability to do everything to please and solely please you allah and with your love in our in our heart and the love of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam in in our heart looking at your commandments and looking at the sunnah of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam give us the knowledge allah give us the knowledge allah keep us in knowledge and iman and amal until we die allah hat al maut allah wala you accept our duas allah you accept our our duas you know what is in the hearts allah you remove our difficulties you wala you grant us cure Uh, our cure grant us cure for ourselves or for our children or our relatives or our friends or our our uh, our neighbors or our countrymen or the people of the world all difficulties that they are facing in different parts of the world especially muslims especially muslims troubled and tortured throughout allah wallah give them respite allah give them iman allah give them amal allah give them the ability to change the course of their life give them the ability to change what is in their hearts so that you can you can change their condition allah wallah wallah so many people in the world are suffering in so many different ways allah wallah you are the one who can remove all difficulties in the in the wink of an eye allah wallah you accept us allah you grant us tawfiq allah to gain nearness to you allah and to gain your pleasure allah to live in your pleasure and to die in your pleasure allahumma innaka hafuzur karim wa tuhibbul afwa fa afwa rabbana zalamna anfusana wa lam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna minal khasirin rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahmatan innaka antal wahhab يا قاضي الحاجات يا رب في درجات يا حلال المشكلات يا موجب الدعوات برحمتك نستغيث يا اول الاولين يا اخر الاخرين يا اكرم الاكرمين يا ارحم الراحمين يا راحم المسكين يا ذو القوه المتين ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم 
ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتوب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله لا اله الا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم امين يا رب العالمين امين يا رب العالمين امين يا رب العالمين <coughs> ان شاء الله we will meet next <coughs> next uh, sunday we remind each other and we pray for each other so we may get the duas of angels